There. I've got the wall raised up high enough now. And while I was doing it, I took the time to put a little marker there, build it up a little extra high in that one spot, right in line with the center line of each wall. So that way when I go to construct the next floor, I will have a marker showing me where the center line is. And it's important to have that because if this center line, this center piece right here isn't positioned right, then on one side you can have the water not going far enough, and on the other side it'll be flowing over the edge. You don't want that. Okay. Now I'm going to drop a few more torches in here because I'm not ready for stuff to be spawning in here just yet. I prefer that to happen after I seal it up and leave. Okay. I guess that's about as good as we're going to get for right now. And now, get started on the ceiling for this floor. And the way that'll work is right here on the divider over the channel, you want two block high ceiling. So you put it on the third block, and you come out three blocks with it. And you just bring it over. Until you get to the corner, where at the corner, whoops, too low. corner you still leave that 3x3 three three hole because that 3x3 three three hole has to go all the way to the top. And I like to do this before I put the water in because it reduces the chance of me falling in, getting dragged down there, and falling down, to, down that pit and suffering my own trap. It might be funny in a sort of way but it certainly is counterproductive. And now I'm going to go ahead and finish this part of the ceiling, and I'll be back. Okay, the roof over the channels is done, and it's time to go ahead and place some water. Now, go ahead and place the water here. And do this with all of the channels, except the last one, which I'm going to handle that one a little bit differently so that I can get out of here. And by the way, just as a uh, little bit of trivia, it takes approximately 17 stacks of cobblestone for each spawning floor. So I guess it's a good thing I saved all that cobblestone that I got from digging this hole out. I'm probably going to use most of it building the spawning floors. which I expect there's going to be 27 or 28 of them because I'm taking this thing all the way up to the maximum build height. Okay. Now we've just got this last one to deal with. And for that, I'm going to build a little barrier right here, just ahead of my little escapeway. way. 
done with the spring, fill it in, dig the dirt out. And set the water current going here. Okay. Now I head over here. Where I'm ready to get out. Oops. I gotta go through here and pull these torches out. Because I'm done down here. I have to put the ceiling on, but... That's not going to be a problem. I do have to get these torches out of here, though, because I don't plan to come back in here. And a dark room with torches in it is not a dark room. The room will have to be completely dark. There might be a little bit of light coming up in the corners from the lava but there won't be very much of it and the higher you go the less that's going to matter okay almost done with the lights Pull this last one, and now it's time to get the heck out of here. Now I just dig this out. It starts working. Get the cobblestone and fill this in. On my way out. Including this part of the roof that I didn't finish. There. That's done. Now I'm going to go around here to all four of these little markers that I put up, and I'm going to extend them up as high as I can reach. They will serve to guide me where the center line is for each successive floor. Oh, and by the way, this one block gap here that I put in because I had my measurements wrong, I'm leaving it there. I have, as you can see, lined that area with torches. Nothing's going to spawn in there. I don't see the need to spend my cobblestone filling that in. I've just got lights in there, and it'll just be sealed off at the top. I want to be careful not to fall in there because it's very quickly getting to the point where the only way out is through the drain and that takes you past the lava. Okay, now it's just a matter of repeat, well, repeating on this floor what we did on the last one for a ceiling. Lock there temporarily to get it started. Start that off. Destroy that block because it would get in the way of the current. And then hop up here and do our thing with shift. Hold down shift to keep from falling off and build a ceiling. Which becomes the next spawning floor. Once this is done, all I have to do is repeat this 27 times. It'll take a lot of time, I'm sure, but it's going to produce a heck of a lot. And now I'm going to finish off this ceiling and start repeating this process all the way up. And here we are back at the main base. 
haven't spent a whole lot of time here in recent weeks and there is a lot that needs to be done here it's almost kind of nostalgic I remember when this workstation area was all right up against a dirt wall and there wasn't very much else exposed it's just enough room for these chests and so on my how things have changed and speaking of change there is a change on the landscape the tower is completed and I must say that it has a most commanding presence on the landscape extending all the way to bedrock it has the killing floor 27 monster spawning floors and at the very top an area that is going to be for farm animals to spawn the idea being that this thing can also provide a certain amount of pork chops and leather and yes the clouds actually go through it on that one floor up there the clouds go through the floor right at floor level most disturbing when you're trying to build I'll tell you that now I was just looking around at the main base did a little bit of sand mining while I was there because I figured it was only right that since I have this wonder over here producing loads of gunpowder among other things it would be only right to have a little bit of fun with TNT first I need to stop and make my fourth diamond pick or diamond shovel since this proved project got started. That's four diamond shovels, 20 diamond pickaxes, at least 15, possibly 20 iron pickaxes, most of which were used in digging the hole out and I burned up another couple of each another couple uh, pickaxes and another shovel building the tower now I have a ladder that goes all the way down it's that same ladder I was using before I just enclosed it right here in the corner of the building and it takes a while to get to the bottom I timed it from the top it takes about 40 seconds to go from the very top down to the bottom bit of trivia each spawning floor I believe is about 16 stacks of cobble I think I said it was and I have the collection area fleshed out a little bit see the great thing about this is that it has been producing the whole time Let's see what's waiting 15 gunpowder five arrows three string some feathers some bones not bad this chest here is where I put all of my stuff when I'm down here for a long long term collection session and this chest is where I want to dump everything quickly and when I just want to get out of here and go back to what I was doing and because I decided I was not going to do construction work at night or during Minecraft rainstorms especially the thunderstorms I would spend a fair amount of time down here every level or two actually every level collecting and while it didn't produce very much to start with it has gotten quite good at producing quite a lot how much you ask let's have a look gunpowder lots of gunpowder 
arrows quite a bit feathers also quite a bit and then of course there's bones and string so it's doing very well let's put these away and now take about five stacks of gunpowder and head up to a crafting table I like to keep the door closed because this branch mine has a problem with slime there is a considerable number of them showing up every now and then and they are a major pain in the butt they cause a lot of lag and I can't think of anything that they're useful for five stacks of gunpowder four stacks of sand equals one stack of TNT and I thought it would only be appropriate to blow at least a stack and I even have a plan of what I want to use it on and now we will fade to the surface it's amazing how big this thing looks especially when you consider that at least two-thirds of it is underground now about the TNT there's been something about this area that has bugged me for a long time since I started digging this pit and that is this chunk of land over here overlooking the trench next to the pit and I am now going to do something about it if I can get out through the door notice that these pressure plate operated doors are a little finicky in that you must approach them at just the right angle in order to uh, get through them if you don't get them at just the right angle you're not going to get through it won't let you in okay let's do some TNT landscaping if the lag will stop the train changing my direction like that I really hated doing that okay this is as good a place as any to start get it down there oh, well could be worse do I have any cobblestone no well dirt will just have to do that make sure of the direction I'm going to go here and we'll just hit this plug the hole and back away TNT has a pretty good effect on just dirt or dirt and gravel. Now, let's see if I can do a better job of this one. Level that. Dig this down. Put 
Place the TNT. Hit it, plug it, and back up. Not bad. All right. Now, one of the nice things about TNT when you're using it to excavate an area is that one TNT going off within two or three blocks of another will set the other one off. So you get kind of a chain reaction that way. We'll just see if we can't blow this hill to kingdom come. Well, that should be a good start. Maybe put one more over here. Well, that sounded impressive. All but one went off, and we have a casualty in the tower. Oh, that's going to be fun to fix. But, I'll get it dealt with. For now, I'm going to simply plug the hole. Note to self, don't play with TNT that close to something you'd rather not blow up. I'll have to get in here and patch this thing up better later. Oops. Dark room isn't quite so dark now. There. Not great, but better. Okay. All right. Pick up some of this loose stuff as it seems to be generating a lot of lag. I'm not surprised all those little pieces to keep track of. And I noticed that there was at least one block of TNT that didn't go off. At least I think I saw one that didn't go off. Okay, enough with the lag. Okay. I thought that was another one, but apparently not. I was going to say that if there was another one, then before setting it off, I was going to put 
a load of cobblestone on the power side of it to keep the blast away from it. And by the way, what I've got there up the side of the building is alternating blocks of dirt that I had originally started from the bottom. The idea there being to spread grass up to the roof of the building, to the top floor. And grass spreads upward one block at a time, but it does so rather slowly, so it's not finished spreading up there yet. When it does, there will be a grass surface up there on top for farm animals, pigs, cows, sheep, and chickens, and so on to spawn on. Chicken? I hate you. You just about tried to push me in that hole. Okay, that's it for the chicken. So much for you. Well, it's most gratifying. Okay. Glutton for punishment. Let's try this again. Ah, blasted some coal loose. Very good. And now I will be back in just a moment. I had just had an idea. Okay, I'm ready now. I figure that up in this area, chickens like to walk around a lot, so thought I'd leave a little something for them. Put down a block of TNT and then place a wooden pressure plate on it. I guess you can't place it on it. But you can place it next to it. Oh, creeper. Hello. Okay. Let's put another one of these little surprises here. Uh-oh. Didn't mean to set it off. Okay. Oh, how about that? I get my pressure plates back. That part's good. All right, we'll try again, and this time I will put the pressure plates down first. Okay, this looks good. Put one there, put one here, put another one down there, and one here. And now without stepping on the pressure plates set down the TNT and when somebody walks on it they get a rude awakening that'll be interesting that will be very interesting I don't know how long it will take but apparently not very long <laughs> oh you gotta love it TNT is fun Whoa. What just got set off? Whoa. Cow, did one of your people set this off?
All right. That's strange. I didn't remember there being a TNT over here, much less with pressure plates. Okay. Maybe there was, and I just managed to forget it. Oh, boy. I had to push him off, or he'd have pushed me off. Okay. Well. Okay, let's just drop another one of these. Let's see. Yes, we've got the pressure plates still. I seem to be having a considerable amount of lag today, so let's just get this done. Put a pressure plate here and another one there and we'll drop in a TNT here and another one there and a few more along this way Note to self, I'm taking a different route back. Now, when one of these critters or some of the creepers that like to uh, show up around here, when they come through there, there's going to be several very rude awakenings all at the same time. And I'm going to stay off of that plateau until they all go off. Okay, that's, that's pretty much just about it. I'm having too much lag to mess with this TNT safely, so... Do a quick tour. Take a quick look at the top here. You know, interesting note, earlier I was kind of playing around and I built a TNT cannon up on top of this thing. And while the cannon worked very nicely, the charge went off before it hit the ground. So that was a sort of a fail in an interesting way. Okay, this is the final spawning floor number 28 and when the grass finally gets up high enough here in the arrangement that I've got going up the side of the building it will spread across here and this will become a place where farm animals and such will be interested in spawning and they will go just like everything else into the water trenches and down into the killing floor some of them not even surviving the fall and in the corners I've got the same arrangement as I do on all the other floors, except I'd never bothered to unblock the dirt over the pit because the reason for it to be there is to simply provide some shade in the pit to keep the full brightness of the sun from going down there and causing things to have too much light. And now I'm going to cut to the collection room. Ah, here we are. Now, what I'm going to do here is put everything in my inventory up here in this chest. And then I'm going to spend some time in the collection zone. 
Now what I'm going to do here is spend 10 minutes here. I'm going to speed this up 400% and you'll be able to see how well this thing is performing. And now it's time to hop out and add up all these items. Okay, I just took a minute to add all this up. And 42 plus 23 plus 63 plus 52 plus 56 equals 236 items collected in 10 minutes. And now there are six 10 minute periods in an hour, so multiply that times six and you get. 1,416 items per hour. I'd say that's doing pretty good. Especially when you consider that I haven't yet bothered to do very much in the way of lighting up the local caves. Get the local caves and so on lit up and this thing should really be cranking out items. Not bad. And that is going to be the subject of the next video which will be entitled cave run. And after that we get down to business with going back to the Gizmos Island base and setting up a minecart track coming back here. That's it for this episode. Take it easy. I'm out of here. By the way, the landmines I set they went off. <laughs> <laughs>